Can you hear me at all? Yeah. Okay. Good morning, everyone. It's uh, Charles with Link Senior, and uh, we're about to start our first Halo live program at 10 a.m. today, Eastern. And I'm actually um, very happy to be doing this program. My name is, as I said, Charles de Vermeer, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Link Senior. And then this is our first, hopefully of many, uh, different uh, Halo live programs where we will be doing um, musical programs, a, a physical uh, exercise for older adults, and things like current events, which is what I'm about to do today. So what I thought we could do is that I could just take you through some of my favorite features uh, of uh, Link Senior on our application called Salo. And I will uh, take you through these, make a few comments, 
And I think they will, you know, spend probably 30, 40 minutes together. And, um, and that will be it. So again, we're on July 1st at 10 a.m. Eastern. So I thought the best we could do is start with a feature that helps with current events. So on the left-hand side of the application that I'm sharing here, we can start and check out the weather. So I usually live and work in Washington, D.C. So oh, sorry about that. Let's see the weather here. So the weather here on Wednesday, that looks like that. Now, today, right now, I'm actually in Davis, West Virginia. So let's go and check that here. As you can see, you just hit that and then get forecast. And this is a, seems about right. We do have great weather. And uh, I'm actually staying here until uh, Friday. So then we can move to the Data Chronicle, which is actually one of my favorite pieces. It's with a partnership with Activity Connection. And so I'm just going to read the items to you, and uh, hopefully you find them interesting. So today, and let me make it bigger so you can see it. So on this date, uh, Wednesday, July 1st, 2020, in the 1200s, apparently, historical artifacts suggest that around this time, sunglasses were invented in China. Smote colored quartz lenses were worn by judges to shield their eyes from both the sun and witnesses when being questioned. That's an interesting use of sunglasses. In 1796, British scientist and physician Edward Gina performed the first successful smallpox inoculation before the vaccine, the disease killed approximately 400,000 Europeans yearly. The World Health Organization declared smallpox eradicated in 1979. And another event that happened on July 1st in uh, 1967 is the fact that the British North America Act took effect as the province of Canada New Brunswick and Nova Scotia joined into a confederation to create the modern nation of Canada. And that's actually, for me, one of the biggest things I wanted to uh, share with you today, as you know, is that today is Canada Day. So for any Canadians or people that live in Canada right now seeing this, um, congratulations. And I'm hoping, I hope that you're celebrating Canada Day uh, well. So... We have now a sunglasses quiz, and it goes, which line is from the song Sunglasses at Night? So uh, answer A, you got it made with a guy in shades. Answer B, go and get yourself some cheap sunglasses. And answer C, answer C is future so bright, I got to wear shades. And the answer is A, and it's by Corey Hart. So that was for that. Now, also um, for on July 1st was the birthday of Princess Diana. So we have a quote of the day from her, which says, everyone needs to be valued. Everyone has the potential to give something back. And I could not agree more. Uh, given the fact that at Nixina, as you might know, we started these um, the old people are cool uh, campaign, and we agree and believe actually that everyone is uh, valued, and that includes the older adults, our residents. So let's hear a little bit about Princess Diana. So it's as it's her birthday. She was born in 1961, and as we all know, she passed away in 1997, uh, but she was born into nobility. Her parents were the Viscount and Viscountess Orthrop. And upon the death of her grandfather, her father be became the eighth Earl Spencer. From a very young age, Dinah was expected to marry royalty. She was a shy girl who did not excel at school, but she loved children and worked as both a nanny and a kindergarten teacher. 
Dinah married uh, Prince Charles. They made an online couple. They married to the street. Dinah used her influence to support charities and humanitarian efforts all around the world, work for which she is still, she is best remembered. So one of the things I'd like us to do today is to continue celebrating um, Canada Day and other things. But before that, I'd like to go through a few facts of fiction with you. So let's do that. So the first fact of fiction, so this is a statement and we need to say, is it a fact or is it a fiction? So yogurt is part of the meat food group because it is derived from milk. And I think that that is fiction because milk is probably a dairy. Yes, that's correct. Yogurt is part of the dairy food group because it is derived from milk. That's the next fact of fiction. Democracy in Pakistan was written by Pakistan's president, Pervez Musharraf, with Jil Jilani Khan as co-author. And I don't know. Let's say it's a fact. It's actually a fiction. Democracy in Pakistan was written by Pakistan's president, Pervez Musharraf, with Jilani Khan as co-author. I do not know any of that. Alexander Fleming won the Nobel Prize for the discovery of penicillin, and that is a fact. Time Magazine wrote in 1999 that penicillin was a discovery that would change the course of history. Obviously, we know that that is obviously very, very true. Let's move to the next piece of our fact of fiction this morning. The French artist Monet, Manet, Renoir, Degas, and Cézanne painted in the Impressionist style. And obviously, I'm French, so I know of these artists, and I think it is true. Yes, that's true. Impressionist paintings include visible brush strokes, emphasis on light, ordinary subject matter, and the inclusion of movement and unusual angles. Let's go to the next one. Cruella de Vil is the chef villainess in the Disney movie 101 Dalmatians. Now, do you know the answer to that question? I think it's a correct. Let's see. And that is correct, yes. In the Disney movie 101 Dalmatian, the car that Cruella de Vil drives is a Panther de Vil. And let's move to our fifth and last fact of fiction. Actually, no, that was the fifth one. So we got this morning four out of five, which was the book about Pakistan, the Pakistani book, which I was not aware of. Let's move to the quotes of the day. So the best way to uh, predict the future is to invent it. And I. Um, I agree with that. Um, I agree very much that we have a lot of agency and regardless of where we stand in our life or the opportunity that we have, we can definitely invent and therefore um, predict part of the future. Let's move to the next quote. So let's see. There are three ways to get something done. Do it yourself, hire someone, or forbid your kids from doing it anonymous. And I would say that that is about right. I have four kids and um, it's probably true. So that's for, that was for the quotes of the day. Um, let's move to uh, the horoscope. So what I like about the horoscope and that's being very selfish of me is that it always opens up on areas and I'm actually born on March 21st. So I'll go through um, maybe a couple of these horoscopes before we move on to something else. So if you're born between 19, uh, March 21st and April 19th, um, emotion, it's the dripping nectar of acceptance in your mental sphere that will precipitate in this soft, flowing inner tranquility. Uh, health, let's see health. You're feeling light and spirited but amidst your bright inner ambience, the, lurk the lurking heaviness of long-term decision is overtaxing, causing you to be strained and overtight. 
Hence, do not jump unless you're aware of the depth that you are in for. Cool. Um, I don't feel that way today, but maybe tomorrow, I guess. And then luck, uh, you're fortunate in earning accolades and adulation. Well, that's nice. Thank you. Um, you know what? I will. The second one I'm going to do is Gemini, just because my wife uh, is a Gemini. Emotions, turning back, and although you may want to, you cannot deny that you're now in a brave new world, and some bridges have been burned. I think there's a spelling mistake here. Uh, but regardless, um, okay, I will tell her that. And then about health, your party hungry appetite will take you riding to various story and jamboree. Good humored and charming, you will expunge all the boredom by being the signature of all eyes. Your social ball will perpetually hit down all your party ten cents. <laughs> I will also tell her that. Um, interestingly enough, with the uh, COVID-19 and everything, we don't have so many so soirees and jamboree. But in case she has some, I will tell her that. And then luck, your childlike emotion will bubble up, releasing you of all your locked feeling that was so natural and spontaneous. Great. Okay, let's, so let's move to... Um, Jokes of the day after the horoscope. Um, why did the cow cross the road to get to the other side? Okay. Uh, let's go to the next one. Today, a man, a man knocked on my door and asked for a small donation towards the local swimming pool, and I gave him a glass of water. That is a, that is a kind of good donation, I'd say. Let's move to the last one. TV has changed the American child from being an irresistible, irresistible force to an immovable object. And I would agree to that. We, uh, we bought a television with our kids uh, for, for our kids last month, actually last year. And uh, when it's on, they don't move too much. All right. So... Together, we did the current events piece on the left, which is, again, one of my favorite pieces. What I wanted to do with us to, then is actually celebrate Canada Day, right? For anyone that's made Canada now, uh, I hope you're having a great day. And uh, let's go through a couple of things that we can uh, celebrate together on. So maybe the first one we could do is I'm going to go into the text uh, trivia and go select, uh, let's see, through the year, and then we're going to go through trivia about Canada together. So true or false, Canada Day was first named Dominion Day. And I believe that that is correct. Yes. True or false, some Canadians call that day the moving day. And I have no idea. I have no idea about that one. That's it. Well, let's just say it's true. Yes. Well, I guess I was lucky here. The third one, what day is commemorated as Canada Day? And I think that we saw from the Daily Chronicles that Canada Day was when the three provinces had became a federation. Now, I forget the year. Um, obviously, it would be July 1st. I think it was 1980, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Okay. Good deal. When was O Canada proclaimed as Canada National Anthem? I don't really know. Um, Let's say 19. Oh, actually, no, it was very, it wasn't that long ago, 1980. What are Canada's two national sports? So <laughs> that's, yeah, okay. So Canada, well, obviously, it's not going to be baseball. It's, it has to be ice hockey and then something else. So it's either this one or this one. And I don't think. Well, I'm sure they do play basketball, but I don't think they play that much basketball. I would guess, I would guess lacrosse and ice hockey. Oh yeah, good deal. 
Canada has two national symbols. What are they? Um, well, I know of one for sure, which is the maple leaf. And I think it's the beaver, the second one. Well, right? It could either be the moose or the beaver. I'm going to go with the beaver. Yeah. Oh, good deal. So the two national symbols of Canada are the beaver and the maple leaf. All right. So then, okay, yeah. So we did see that in the uh, data chronicle. Which territories joined in the Federation of Provinces on July 1st? I remember there were three of them. Um, and I remember for sure there was Nova Scotia. Scotia. Yes, well, there's actually only one with Nova Scotia, so it has to be this answer. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it's this one. Correct. I'm doing pretty well this morning. Which province has the largest number of bilingual Canadians? Uh, well, bilingual, it has to be French and English, obviously. And I think the one that has the biggest number of French-speaking people are, is Quebec. So I'd say Quebec. Yeah. Okay. We're now at nine out of ten. So let's see. What is the official, only official bilingual province? Hmm. I think, I don't know. I'd say Quebec again, just because, but I don't know if they have to speak French there. Yeah. Um, I have no idea. Let's say, uh, well, let's say Quebec again. Oh, no. New Brunswick. Well, now I know something, I guess. So I guess in New Brunswick, they can speak both, well, they have to speak both French and English. And I think Quebec must be just French then. And then the last one, who was the first minister in Canada? And I think that's John, right? For some reason, for some reason, the only, word, the only name that I would know is John. Yeah. Okay. Good deal. So we got eight out of ten. That's pretty good. I don't think I knew so many things about Canada. Um, right. So that's that. Um, so we did the Daily Chronicle together. We celebrated a little bit of, uh, of uh, Canada Day. Maybe what we could do now together is... Let's do a game still to celebrate Canada Day, and then we can move on to something more French, which uh, I wanted us to do together just because I'm French, and uh, I'm not going to be traveling to France this summer with, with everything going on, so that will be my way to spend some time there. So this is one of our games. It's a text-based uh, game, which uh, is sometimes can make it easier for everyone. And what I thought we could do is just Canadian quotes in English. So let's see. So, through other people's faults, correct. Uh, so I guess, oh yeah. So, so this is like a quote, and these are the letters that we have. And so the letters are all dropped up and we need to put them together to finish the quote. And obviously we have two words here. And I'm guessing that the first one, well, I'm guessing the second one is men. That's an easy one. And I'm guessing the first one would be uh, Y. So let's see. We have W-I-S-E and M-E-N. Oh, well, correct. Okay, so that's the first one. The second one is, oh, well, that's a long word. So something, something, something is a tree whose root is bitter, but its, its fruit is very sweet. I have no idea. So let's do a hint here. Pat, pat in patience? Can that be, can that be the, the word of a, I, I guess so, patience. There we go. I didn't know there was a, I didn't know there was a tree called patience. All right. So uh, we learn every day, I guess. So the next one is, um, 
Canadian quotes in English again, and then here are different letters. I have no idea. It's just something, something, something said, then done. I know something called easier said than done, but I don't know what they say in Canada. Let's see. E a easier easier said than done. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Okay, sorry. Well, actually, I did say that, so I guess I was right. Okay, easier said than done. For some reason, the the letters were jumbled up in a way where my brain didn't connect that. Probably need a bit more coffee here. All right. So this is the third quote in English. Let's move on to the next one. So, love of word one, word two, word three, to the bank. So, word, love or the way to the bank, I'd say. All right, that's a pretty easy one. So, love or the way. That was a difficult one. It was already arrange in the correct way. Laugh all the way to the bank. Don't know what I mean. Um, okay, so that's the fifth quote. All that something, something, something is not gold. I have no idea. That's a pretty long word. I like to, to it's not really cheating, but you have these hints here. So let's do the hints a little bit. All that. Oh, I think I know what that is. All that glitter, all that glitters is not gold, right? All that glitters. Oh, yeah, it's conjugated. No, it's not conjugated. It's the, all that glitters. Yeah, no, it, it is a verb conjugated with an S at the end. Here we go. All that glitters, E-R-S, is not gold. Okay, good deal. The next one is walk a mile in my... Learn where they pinch. Oh, I love that quote, actually. I think we have something similar in French. Uh, so walk in my, a mile in my, so it's probably like a word of a shoe. And I'm guessing it's uh, moccasin, moccasins, I think you say in English. Uh, they're these leather shoes to learn where they pinch. So, so walk in my shoes and you'll learn where my shoes hurt. Uh, oh, yeah, that's a great quote. Okay. So learn or well, walk a mile in my M. Oh, so let's see if I can spell that correctly. I think it's M O two C's Moka uh Sins with an S at the end. Yeah, correct. Good deal. Again, these they these leather shoes that are pretty um fancy looking. Uh, I used to have a pair actually. Here we go. Um and then we have that's the seventh quote. When you talk about the sun, you will see her of the sun's, uh, when you talk about the sun, you will see her beams, I guess, beams with an S. When you talk about the sun, you will see her beams, B-A-M-S. Is that it? Uh, yeah, cool, good. All right, um, let's move on to the next one. So you cannot catch some, something with Nice. I have no idea what that is. There's two Ks, a U, and double S, and an N. No idea what that is. Let's see. You can't catch stunks with mice. I wouldn't know why. Is that it? Um, yeah, that's it. I have no idea what that quote means. Out of ten, do not yell dinner until your knife is um, I right. Easy with three in the and do not yell your your knife is in the low. Okay. Well, I guess that means that. You shouldn't yell dinner until your first one to be able to eat. Uh, okay, yeah, here we go. In the loaf. And then the last one is um, the death of two words. Something, something. For a drunken man to fall upon. So it has to be the devil places 
a something for doing a mountain for a point. Why would the devil um I guess it hello? Why would the devil chase a pillow? I don't know. Is that it? Hello, yeah. For a drunken male. I guess that's nice of him to help the drunken man fall onto a pillow so that he can sleep. And here we go. So again, to all Canadians or people living in Canada, happy. Uh, I'm wishing you. I'm wishing you a great uh, Canada Day. Hope you're celebrating well. Um, July July first is actually so it is Canada Day, like we like we discussed. It, it's also uh, the day of something in France called the Tour de France, which I, I'm I'm pretty sure all of us have heard about. It's this um, uh, sports competition, uh, a cycling, and that happens in in Europe, and that's most of the most of the uh, most of the event is in France. So what I thought we could do is just quickly um, do some trivia about the Tour de France. And then, if you want, if we have time, yeah, we we'll probably have a bit of time. I will take us to um, to Paris just to share with you a few things about Paris. So, the oldest Tour de France cyclist is Henri Paré. At what age? I have no idea, but I think that 50 and 54 is pretty old. So I'd say 48. Actually, 50. Wow. Okay. The oldest winner of the Tour de France was. Belgium sperm Lambeau in 1922 at what age? I think he, I don't know, I'd say 40? No, 36. Okay. I don't know much about the Tour de France. I, uh, Jacques Antiguil of France, Eddie Merckx of Belgium, Bernard Hino of France, and in the reign of Spain, each have won the Tour de France how many times? I'd say it has to be at least and like four or five, I guess. I, I don't know. That's it. Oh, well, cool. Good deal. Four. Gino Bartali holds the record of longest time spent uh, span between titles, having earned his first and last two victories. How many years apart were these titles? Um... I don't know. I'll take a wrong guess again. I'd say five years. No, ten. Years. Oh wow, that's a long time. I guess it, professionally cycling, uh, you can be a professional cyclist for a long time. The German rider Eric Zabel has won the most green jersey with six consecutive wins from 1986 through 2001. Is that true or false? Um, I don't know if that's true because I think. The green thing is when you're second place, right? Second or third place, because the yellow one is the first one. So I don't know. I'd say, let's just say it's true. Yeah, okay. So that's Eric Zabel. The longest tour was in 1926 with how many kilometers? And that would be, oh, wow. I don't know about that one. Let's just say this one. 5,745. The youngest winner was Henri Cornet of France in 1904. How old was he when he won? Well, I can't be five. 19 seems really young. Uh, let's see. I'd say 20. Oh, cool. Good deal. Uh, Lance Armstrong has the most number of wins before he was stripped of his title. How many titles would, have, would he have held for his wins? I'm pretty sure it was seven. For some reason, I have the word seven in my mind. Um, I think it's seven. Yeah. A cancer survivor and internationally recognized fundraiser, Lance Armstrong banning and stripping of his title was confirmed by the Union Cyclist International and... and Union Cycliste Internationale in French in October 2012 because of allegation of performance enhancing drug use. So I think, yeah, so I was right in saying that was seven. The very first Tour de France was held in what year? I think 
I think for some reason, in my mind, I have 1903. In my memory, I have 1903. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, oh, I skipped the last one. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I guess I guess I had five out of ten. Well, I'm better better than I thought. Um, I'm not cycling is not my favorite sport. All right, so um, we're we're ten thirty one. Let me take you a little bit of to uh, let me take you to Paris a little bit. Share with you uh, the city where I was born and raised, and uh, so we can go into the slideshows. And let's pick. Uh, Sorry, I can't do two things at the same time. Here, travel. And then cities in the world. And you can see all these fantastic cities. You can go down and pick France. So obviously, you know, the, we all know of the Eiffel Tower. It's like the emblem of Paris. And for a lot of people, it's the emblem of tourism. Um, I've been up the Eiffel Tower, I think, two or three times. One was very recently, actually, three or four years ago, uh, with my family, which was nice. Night, it does shine like that. Sometimes at the end of the year, with the the Christmas, with, with the end of the year holidays and so on, they um, they color it in different uh, with different light colors, which is very nice. Um, that's another angle. Yeah, it's not lit yet, so you can see the difference, which is pretty amazing when they light it and not. That is a view from the uh, Procadero, which is a, um, uh, a monument, which is slightly uphill. And I'd say, I think it's west. Wait, yeah, it's west of the Eiffel Tower. I used to rotate skate here when I was a kid. Um, that is the same view, but slightly closer. Um, that's another view slightly south from the uh, Seine River, and that's actually just so you know, it's if ever you go to France, uh, or if you know somebody going to France, these ships are. It's one of the best ways to see Paris in the in the in the monuments because I mean, there's many monuments in Paris, but a lot of the monuments are um, along the Seine, which is the river in France in in Paris. Um, that's a very interesting view taken from a special lens. Just under the Eiffel Tower, actually, and as you can see, this, the sun is, the sun is shining. Uh, that's an old picture. These are the old uh, Volkswagen cars, the Beetles. Uh, my mom had one. My parents had one like that. Uh, that's a that's a view of a street typical in Paris. Um, looks like Le Marais, which is in the center of Paris, but actually it could be anywhere in, in Paris. Um, you have these old houses. We don't have too many more, too many like this anymore. Um, that's a view from pretty high up. I guess it's probably a view from the Eiffel Tower itself. Yeah, it has to be. And it's looking, um, well, it's actually looking towards the Trocadero, the monument I told you about, which was here. So the, on the previous picture, we were actually standing here. Uh, that is a view of the Louvre Museum, and it's taken from a monument called the Arc de Triomphe, and it's actually overlooking the very famous avenue called the Champs Elysees. Um, that's a pretty neat picture. And that is actually the monument I just mentioned, which is the Arc de Triomphe, uh, which is the Arc of triumph, so it's uh, it was a I think I believe it was a Roman type of uh, monument dedicated to victories, uh, battle victories. That's another view of it. Um, yeah, I do see, and um, that's another one. Here it's, it's la de triomphe de l'étoile. So de l'étoile is the, the it means the star. And the reason we say that is that the big um, square or the big uh, area where it is looks like a star when you when you look at it from above, and all of the different uh, spikes of the star point towards the different avenues that take you to the Arc de Triomphe. That's why it's called the the star, and that's a view at night. 
That is a view of one of the many different entrances to the Louvre Museum, which is this very famous museum. And here you can see it has the, um, the pyramid, the very famous pyramid uh, in the Louvre Museum. And you can see that museum, that, I, that pyramid there. That is the entrance actually to the underground piece of the Louvre Museum. So here we stand inside the courtyard of the Louvre Museum, and we're looking towards, um, well, the Arc de Triomphe that we saw before is in that direction. It's not this one, that's a much smaller one. It's in that direction. And uh, I think that the light that we see here, that has to be the uh, Eiffel Tower at night. So um, that's another view of that uh, pyramid. Oh, and obviously, if we talk about Paris, we have to talk about art. And if we talk about art, we have to talk about the Joconde, which is probably the most famous. The, I'm sorry, we say Joconde in French. It's called the Mona Lisa in English. And it's obviously one of the most famous paintings in the world. Um, this is an aerial picture of Paris. And this is one of the uh, um, islands. And I believe it's Lille de la here you can see Notre Dame, which unfortunately burnt a couple of years ago. Um, but this is the Seine River with the many bridges and so on. And uh, I guess it's interesting because the plane that was taken to take that picture is a proper plane, propeller plane, sorry. That's a view by night of the Notre Dame, uh, the cathedral, which I guess that view hasn't changed too much because I believe these have stayed, but unfortunately, as we know, it burned two years ago. That's another view. Um, and that is a view, oh yeah, it is a view of Notre Dame taken from one of the bridges, which are east. So that is, um, the way going up the Seine River. And uh, Notre Dame and Saint Pierre, Jumiere, that's just outside. Yeah, that's one of the bridges. <laughs> the, these are some of the uh, uh, boats. They're called Peniche. Um, some of them move, some of them still work, like they, the people take them to go to move around, but some of them are just don't move anymore and some people actually still live in these boats and then some of them are transformed into restaurants and and bars and and so on and this is l'hôtel de national des invalides so the the invalide is uh used to be a hospital for napoleon actually uh, invalide means invalid like you uh, something happened to your body um but uh, that is not too far from the um the eiffel tower and this is one of the entrances. This is the chapel inside. Um, and that is the view from the initial entrance, from the main entrance. And uh, that is one of the, uh, part I think to the east of that. Okay. That is a picture of Napoleon. Actually, there's a mistake here, it's on the A to O. Um, and that is a place called Le Centre Pompidou. So Le Centre Pompidou is a, it's a very famous museum that I think opened, if I'm not mistaken, in the 80s. I forget, I think. Uh, but obviously, as you can see, it, it's a very modern art type of museum. And I remember when, the, uh, when, it, when, it was, uh, when, when it was open, a lot of the discussions were, what is this thing type of discussion? Because the, uh, the outside... Uh, like these scaffolds are uh, pretty unusual, I would say. But it's a fantastic museum. And the way it's built, there's so much light that permeates throughout the museum. It's a, um, if, you, if you happen to go, if you know someone going, I highly recommend it. As you can see, it's a very kind of open type of uh, museum. And it's a very fun uh, visit. Uh, and you have all these pipes on the side and so on. Um, yeah, you can't talk about Paris without talking about the bakery, the bakeries. So uh, boulangerie is, is the French word for bakeries. 
uh, where you can buy bread and, and pastries and actually sometimes full menus. Uh, but there are many, 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 many different types of uh, uh, boulangeries in Paris. And uh, that's a pretty old looking one. And this is typical where you would buy, so different types of pastries and so on. This is the Pont Alexandre III. So uh, it's one of the bridges that crosses and uh, it wasn't too far away from where I live actually in Paris. Um, and it's the bridge that takes you to the uh, Invalide that we saw previously. It has these very nice uh, golden sculptures, these victory sculptures. This is Le Moulin Rouge. This is much north, northwest of Paris. Um, and uh, Le Folie Spigal. So that nightclub actually, um, th this, this place changed names different uh, many, many times over the years. And unfortunately, that nightclub closed. It was a very fun place, actually. Le Moulin Rouge, the Place de l'Opéra which is the opera. So that's in the west part of Paris, the very famous opera, obviously. Um, Café de la Paix, this is a famous place where a lot of um, uh, artists used to, uh, still, actually still hang out. And it's close to uh, Saint-Germain-des-Prés, the, the neighborhood, which is a very artistly uh, neighborhood in Paris. And that is the view of the opera itself. And it's where the Académie Nationale de la Musique so the French um, Musical Academy, I, th I think we say in English, um, holds its headquarters. That's another view of that square just in front of the opera. And uh, that's it. So, but I hope you've been enjoying these uh, pictures and this time spent with me this morning. Again, I want to thank you for spending time and being part of this first uh, Link Senior Live. Um, activity and program today. And I want again to celebrate uh, Canada Day and everyone is Canadian, lives in Canada or knows a Canadian, um, congratulate them on having such a fantastic country. And uh, I hope that you have fun. We will be having more of these programs and I was very happy to be your first host today. And I hope that you've learned something a little bit, that you've learned a little bit about Paris, the Tour de France, um, or Canada, and that you also take that as an invitation to browse our content, browse our program. And for the people um, that uh, are in the activity and life enrichment department, I wanted to take the time to thank you for what you do. I hope that we are helpful, and I hope that these uh, Links in Your Life programs are helpful to you in engaging your residents. And um, I would love to invite you to spend a fantastic month of July. And if you need anything from us, feel free to reach out anytime. Thank you. Take care and have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.